hello in this video we will learn how to implement multi-screen forms in power apps now you may ask of what use is this this functionality is particularly useful where you have many fields on your form implementing a multi-screen form functionality will separate your fields into different screens instead of having users scroll through one page to view fields on your form, hence giving your users a cool progressive form experience. We will also learn how to undo data validation as well as how to prefill these multi screen forms in cases where you want to edit a record. With that being said, let's get into the video. Now we're on to Power App Studio. We have a simple app that handles product management. So basically, there is a product management table on Dataverse where we are writing and reading data from. So we have a simple gallery here on the view on the view screen that gets data from the HRE product table, and we have in just some labels and a button to add a new product. As, and this directs us to a new page this is where we are going to be adding our form and that is the product form page so the first thing to do when you are adding a multi-screen form is to actually add the form yeah nah i never knew that i never knew that and let's do that edit form and let's just resize this to be nice and clean on our canvas so the next thing we're going to do is to add our data to the form and once that's done we're adding our fields so i'm just going to remove this and add in the fields that want. and before that let's just set it to one column so it's going to be just one column on the field so to implement this small tie screen form functionality we need to do a little bit of groundwork basically prep work to handle this and let's just basically what we're going to be adding is the buttons and the visual indicators of this um form so let's first start with the buttons that will handle navigation across the screens and i'm just going to remove the border radius so it has the same look and feel of other parts of the app let's make it a 50 height and um let's rename the button to next let's duplicate it copy paste let's put it at this end and let's call this one back then the last thing or maybe not the last thing but another thing we need to do is to add in a text label which will basically serve as um, an indicator of which page we are on I'm going to center that set it to semi Let's say 22 and let's call it overview overview so we are going to rename this form the overview form so this thing save all right nice and clean and let's just change the color to be that of the button so we go to the field property of the button copy that and set the all of the text to that and let's just increase the size a bit let's say 27 or something yeah i think that looks better and let's set this to bold yeah that's that that looks fine all right all right so now that is done the next thing is to duplicate your screens so how many depending on how many screens you want in the whole multi-screen form we're going to deploy a screen by that amount so let's just duplicate this i you know we're going to rename this so which we won't have any confusion add product add product screen then we rename this to add product screen to then we rename this to add product screen three. So now that is done, 
what we're going to be doing is to be deleting the fields which we don't need so on the first page we're going to use that as our overview page and we're only going to leave the product name product description and product type so basically we're going to delete every other field so to do that let's just go into the control explorer here or the tree view and let's select them so you click you hit control and click to multi select the um the data card so once you have selected all that you delete it and let's go to the next page and let's delete the product name product name product description and type and then we delete the age classification auditor and product manager then on the last page what we're going to do is just delete the first six one two three four five six yeah now that we've separated that so let's just rename everything appropriately so we're going to call this screen let's call it um pricing pricing and availability availability and um yeah we're going to call this the pricing form you know we're just renaming all this so later in the form we know like which is which and we won't have any like confusions as regards this then the last page let's call this let's see other details other details and let's rename the form also other details um, yeah and that is done so the next thing is just to on select of this button in the on select property we are just going to navigate to the next screen so navigate to add product screen to let's copy that and here it will navigate to screen three and on this back button, we should navigate to screen one. Let's go to the last page. So here, we are going to set this to navigate to screen two. And let's rename this to submit. So because basically once you're on the last page, we want them to submit the, submit the form. Yeah, so now that is done, Another thing I'd like to add is like a visual indicator of what stage on the form you're in. So this is purely optional, but basically you don't want your users to be to be clicking next and next and back without knowing how many screens they have to click through. So to handle that, I'm just going to use a slider to set this up. And let's just resize this to be the same as the buttons. You no, know well, let's reduce it a bit. Let's say, um, yeah, this should be fine. Let's increase the what's the property called? Let's increase the rail, let's increase it to about, you know, let's say 20 so it can be a little bit thicker, and we would um, set the the, the real fill you now the value fill actually will be the same as the button fill you know just to have this way of consistency across the styling of the app itself and let's just set the handle size to be let's say 30 and what's the last thing we need to do? so last thing we need to do is to set it to view because they shouldn't be able to actually click on it and let's set show value to to off I, I guess that's all actually okay let's say the feel to be the same as the button so it's, it doesn't have any right so that's nice so since we have three screens let's just say this should be the three percent on the next screen let's recenter this and this will be 67 then 
on the last page it is going to be 100 so now let's test that out yeah it looks nice and clean a great success all right so the next part once you notice once you add the form and you notice there's no item to display what you need to do is to check the default mode and set it to new so you can actually see because basically it was trying to edit a record and since there is no record it will say no item to display let's just do the same for the others All right so now that all our prep work is done it's time to cook let's go into the main functionality that's going to drive this multi-screen form actually before that you need to remove this button since this is the first page of the multi-screen form you don't need a back button there so um now let's get into the form now that our navigation is nice and clean the next thing we should get into is data validation so you notice this screen is set as required as shown by this asterisk here this screen is set as required as shown by this asterisk here well i'm out man i think it's tripping and you don't want someone to be able to click next without filling this required field so now there are two ways to handle this the first way which is basically the easiest way is to access the valid property of the form and query that and check if all required fields have been filled all required fields have been filled yeah and if it hasn't you will disable this button so let's quickly implement that so let's say the name of our Form is overview form and we go to the navi to the display mode of our button and we say um if overview form dot valid so if it is valid then we should no if it is valid then the display mode should be edit else it should be disabled Let's see that. Now you see the field isn't the required field product name isn't populated. But once we populate it, you can see it um it activates. And this doesn't affect other pages on the form, even if we set this to let's say required and we set this to true and we come here it doesn't affect it since they are on different forms and we can also you know what well, let's also set the description to true so now that we set the description to true there are now two required fields but one isn't filled and that's why this is disabled so we can move forward until we it now that that's filled you see that this um is basically activates so that's the first method the second method is a little bit more complicated but it gives you the ability to leverage power apps native data validation you know the one where the field is highlighted if required and not populated but for simplicity for simplicity's sake I'm going to stick with uh, the first method. The basic idea of the second method is that we'll be using a collection to hold our data for the whole multi screen form process. So, on this form, you see that we're connecting it to the HRE products table, which is on Dataverse. So, in this second method, what we are going to do is to create a collection that's the same schema as this. So, it will be like um, as many as many fields are in your form, you create a column on your collection. So for the product name, you would create a new underscore product name column. For this, you create a new underscore product description column. And once that is set up, what you'll be doing is that on click of this button, you would be submitting to that. You 
you will submit to that collection. So in that case, you will have changed the HRE product to your new collection. Then on click of this button, that means on select of this, rather than navigating, you would be submitting to that collection. And you do the same thing on all the subsequent screens. And at the end of everything, you're just going to patch that collection into your into your data source. So that's the basic idea. But as I say, for simplicity's sake, you're just going to stick with this first method. But if you want me to create a new video on that method, just let me know down in the comments below and I'll create a new video explaining that other process in detail. Okay. So let's move on now. So now that our validation is all set up, the next thing we need to do is to just copy this and paste it on the remaining screens. So let's go to a second screen. Let's go to the display mode property, which is display mode. And let's paste this there. Then we change the name of the form to be the pricing form. Let's copy that. And let's paste that here. Copy the whole thing again. And let's go to the last page. And on the display mode property, we paste that. And we change the name of the form to match the page. And that's done. And let's set, let's set each classification to be required. Just to be sure that this is working as expected. Yeah, that looks fine. Same as this, same as this. So now that validation is all set up, let's move on with the form to test it all. So let's just call it uh, airports. Let's say uh, for listening to your music. Let's say private. Product prices. Well, if you buy it for that price, PGs. Okay, and let's move to the last page. Let's say it's classification. Let's put in that. And we need to click submit. So the next part is the actual statement that writes the data into our data source. So we're going to patch this to our data source. And to do that, we use the patch function. So patch, the name of our table is HRE products. And since we are creating a new record, we'd say defaults HRE products. So this creates a new record. And what do we want to patch to this, um, this table? So what we're going to do is for each of the form, we are going to get all the data that is related to each of the form. So to access that, all you need to do is to use the update property of the form. So the first form is our overview form. And to access the updates, all we need to do is say overview form dot updates. The next form is our pricing form, pricing form dot updates. And the last form is all that details form dot updates. So what this does is that it basically gets everything that you've added to the form since the last time it was reset and it patches it into our table as a new record since we set it as default. And so now let's just test that. So we want to patch after patching this, we want to navigate to our view screen view product screen. So let's click submit. And you see this has been added as a new as a new record. So let's just if you want to add another one, you'd notice that this um this forms basically hold previous data. To combat this, all you need to do is to reset the forms before navigating into those pages. 
so on click of this you want to first reset all forms so reset form reset form what's the name of the form overview form actually yeah overview form the next one is let's let me just copy and paste this a bunch of times actually and let's rename this to pricing form and let's do this one to other details form nice so once we do this you see that it's now clears previous entries so now that's that the next thing you want to ask is how do we handle um data modification basically if you want to edit an existing record so on click of this button we we are navigating to the add product screen which is this but it doesn't prefer the data so to undo this let's create um let's create a variable that handle this or before that let's just copy everything that's here since we also need to reset the forms before doing anything so reset the forms then the next thing we need to do is to create a variable that will hold the data from that record so to use and just format this so it's nice and clean let's create a new variable set let's say var form data to this item so this is now um on click of this this our new variable will now hold all the data from this record and from there we can access it on our subsequent form screens and we also need to create another another variable that would handle if the form is in edit mode or new mode so we call that var form mode and we save on click of the edits button we want to say the form mode to be form mode dot edit all right and that's done so let's see if we move into this what we need to do here is the item property of the form the item property item we want to set it to be far form data and the form mode which is default mode we want to set that to our variable var form mode so you can see it has gotten the data from our variable and it has gotten the default mode from our variable also and if we also if we do this you see it prefills the data that we last we last submitted so we'll just replicate that on our other screens so we click on this the default mode should be var form mode and the item should be var form data the last one same thing a default mode should be var form mode and an item should be var form data so that is already prefilled so the next thing is how to patch this data since this is a new is it is not a new record but a record we are um the record we are updating we can't use defaults since that will create a new record so what we will just do is since our var form data already holds the record like the whole record um schema for the record we are updating we can also just use that in our patch function so if you click this we can just cut this out and play var from data so you now you ask if what if we want to add in a new add in a new um record how do you handle that so that is pretty easy so instead of so you know when we are editing we are basically um setting var form data to this item which is in essence that whole record but when we are creating a new record there is no 
data yet so all we need to do is to set var form data to default set var form data to default so basically the default hre product that we copied away from our path function we can now set that here on our var form data so say default hre product so what this will do is that if it is a new form this var form data will in essence be this default hre product so it is not going to update a new record but rather it's not going to update an existing record or rather create a new record and we should also set a var form mode let's say far form mode should be instead of edits it should be new all right so now that is done let's see what's this error so we didn't close our brackets so we need to always close your brackets all right so now let's test the editing out so let's edit this so now we're going to add in a sales channel to fill this if we click on edit and on the sales channel let's add in direct click on next and we click submit now we can see it actually edits nice and if you also try to create a new um a new record okay yeah and a classification is this you can see it creates a new record and doesn't ex edit an existing record so that is basically how you handle multi-screen functionality multi-screen form functionality on your app so i hope by now you will be able to replicate the multi-screen form functionality on your power apps phones if you found this content helpful please like and subscribe to the channel and until next time bye